Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time of day you're watching this, I'm glad you're here. My name is Connor Forbes, and I serve as your vicar here at Mount Calvary. And I forgot to do it, so we're going to do it now. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It probably feels a little weird to say that when the altar behind me is designed for Good Friday. Uh, but even though I'm recording on Good Friday, you're going to be watching this on Easter Wednesday. And so, alleluia, Christ has indeed risen. Today we are on 1 Peter chapter 3. I encourage you, uh, read the whole chapter, but today we're going to be focusing on the second part. How, because Christ suffered, we know we have a future that is guaranteed. We might suffer a little while, yes, in this life, but ultimately we will be victorious because Jesus is victorious. Let's begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in song. Amen. 
keeping you on your toes with a location change uh, and an outfit change too. I am now wearing my Mount Calvary shirt. Our reading for today comes from 1 Peter 3. Like always, as I mentioned, please read the entire chapter. Learn what God's word says to you in this chapter. Today, we are focusing on just a few verses at the end. 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning at verse 18. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels and authorities and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a lot of good stuff in here, and we could spend way more than a day on this chapter alone, ranging from Peter talking about baptism corresponding to the ark which now saves you, to Jesus' descent into hell in verse 19. There's a lot to talk about. And really, my simple devotion for you today can be summarized by, Jesus, by Peter's words about Jesus there at the very beginning. Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous. You see, there are a lot of good confessional statements in here. We rightly say Christ descended into hell. He declared victory over evil, death, Satan, and sin once and for all, so much that he goes to hell to declare it victory there. You know, I also love the explanation of why and how we perform exorcisms. Whoa, Vicar's talking about exorcisms today. Yes, I am, because I love that because our Lutheran understanding of an exorcism is that when we're exorcising a demon, we are simply pronouncing the victory of Christ. We are pronouncing that Christ has defeated them. They've already lost. That's exactly what Peter says here. Our hope that Christ is arisen, why we say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, is that we're declaring our victory. We are declaring the fact, not that there is a battle yet to come where Jesus may or may not win, we're not sure, but that battle has already been won, has already been fought, and Jesus rose victoriously. Now, what does Peter say? How do we access that suffering once and for all? Well, Peter here uses the definition of baptism. He says that just as Noah had an ark that saved eight people through water, so too does baptism save you and I and all who believe. It doesn't remove our dirt. It doesn't wash us of uh, the filth that's on our skin every day and instead washes us of our sin. It gives us a good conscience with the Father. Because of baptism, God doesn't see us as sinners, but instead baptism sees, has the Father see us as his perfect son. God doesn't see us, you and me, as sinners in baptism. He sees Jesus, the one who perfectly obeyed the Father's will, the one who suffered for all, the righteous, for the unrighteous. Brothers and sisters, that is the comfort that is in 1 Peter 3, among other things. That Christ suffered for all. He suffered for you so that you might go out and declare the victory that has already been won because of Jesus. And as you go about your days and your weeks, you face various trial and temptations, you can cling to the waters of baptism. Because it is through that water, that baptismal grace, that Christ has saved you. The Father doesn't see a sinner because of baptism. He sees his perfect Son because of baptism. You are saved. You have a victory today. Amen. 
Let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. I'll see you tomorrow.